Hello and welcome to the Benefits of Exercise session as part of the Fit for Life programme. If you haven't already seen the introductory session and the one on goal setting, please go back and watch that now. You can find it on our YouTube playlist or on our website. My name is Gail Preston and I'm one of the physiotherapists at St Christopher's. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the benefits of exercise. So first of all, what is exercise? Put quite simply, exercise is movement. And movement is the key to everything here. In order to get the most benefit, we just need to move more. That means lying less and moving more. We can break it down into different forms of exercise. Exercise that makes us breathless, which is cardiovascular exercise. Exercises to make our muscles stronger. Exercises to increase our balance. And exercises to increase our flexibility. All of these are beneficial. And the amount we require will be different for each of them. So what happens if I don't exercise? If I'm not physically fit, I find that a task might be particularly difficult. I get short of breath doing it, I get tired doing it. And these are unpleasant feelings, so it's a natural reaction then to avoid doing that activity. What happens then is we start to get weaker and less fit. So the things that we were managing to do before start to get harder for us. So we need to try to reverse this. If we start challenging ourselves with activities that make us a little bit short of breath, that aim to build our muscle strength, then we will get stronger and fitter and more able to do the tasks that we enjoy. So we can reverse this downward spiral into a positive spiral. And that's really, really important. When we feel confident doing activities that make us a little bit short of breath and that are hard for us, we will gain strength and fitness. So why should I exercise? Well, we know exercise reduces the risk of major illnesses, such as heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes. It boosts our mood and our self-esteem, and it increases the quality of our sleep. Do you know what? It's free. If exercise were a pill, it would be one of the most cost-effective drugs ever invented. So, how much should I do? Some type of physical activity every day is important. Any type of activity. The more you do, the better. So the advice for people aged 19 to 65 is 150 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise a week, plus two sessions of strengthening exercise a week. If you're over the age of 65, it's also recommended you include some balance and flexibility work within your strength training. And as you get older, you have increased risk of having a fall. If you've fallen or have a fear of falling, improving your balance, strength and flexibility can help you to feel more confident. If you've got any concerns about exercising, you should speak to your GP. Remember, something is better than nothing. Any exercise will be beneficial. So what does all this really mean? What is moderate intensity exercise? It's quite simply an exercise that means you breathe more deeply. Your heart is pumping fast. You can still talk when you're doing it but maybe you can't sing. So this might include brisk walking, riding a bike, dancing, tennis. So we can all imagine what that might feel like. What's vigorous activity? Well here, this is when you're breathing and working hard and fast. You'll not be able to say more than a few words without pausing for your breath. And you can maybe turn a moderate activity into a vigorous one by working harder at it. But these might include jogging or running, swimming fast, riding a bike, walking upstairs, skipping rope, these sort of things. Included activities here that'd be possible to do in the current circumstances. But other sports, rugby, football, netball, can also be included. And there are many different exercise sessions available at the moment that don't require expensive equipment. What about strength training? These are aimed at building muscle and maintaining muscle strength. As we get older, we generally lose muscle strength. We want to maintain that as much as possible. So these might include yoga, pilates, carrying heavy shopping bags, doing some gardening, making sure it's heavy gardening and digging, some body weight exercises, such as squats, press ups and sit ups. There are many different exercises available online that don't require expensive equipment or gym membership. St Christopher's have some lying, sitting and standing exercises on their website that you might well enjoy doing. And also a live exercise session every Wednesday morning via YouTube. The NHS have some good resources. 
and the Couch to 5K plan is a good way of getting somebody up and running. The Charter Society of Physiotherapy also have some good resources and I'll put the links to all of these below. Essentially, this comes down to sitting less and moving more. And we want to try to do this throughout our day. So how can we do this? Maybe sitting, um, maybe standing instead of sitting on the train or the bus. Taking the stairs rather than the lift. Setting a reminder to get yourself up every half an hour. If you're working from home, placing a laptop up on a table or a box so that everything's a little bit higher so you're having to stand for it. When you're on the phone having a conversation, can you walk around your room rather than sitting? And swap some of your TV time to a walk and an activity. All of these are just ideas. And if you're juggling working from home at the moment, it might feel even more difficult. You're feeling tied to your desk. But build into your day some time where you do get up, walk around, even down the garden, around the block, or even up and down the stairs a couple of times. All of this helps. If you're at home and finding yourself spending more time on your sofa, think about how you can do something a little differently. Maybe use an advertisement break in the TV as a trigger to move. That could be marching on the spot and sitting, getting up and walking around, or even going up and down the stairs. What you do will depend on your ability. And there's always something you can do. Bet at the moment, it feels like this. Remember this, for the goal setting talk? Monumental, an uphill struggle, a huge amount to think about and try to integrate and change. Remember to think about it a step at a time. Don't worry about the whole picture. Remember, anything you can do is good. Something is better than nothing. Anything you do is a step in the right direction. I've often heard from other people that the hardest thing about going for a run is getting out the door. And I really believe that's true. The hardest bit is getting started. Once you've started an activity, you start to feel the benefit of it. You feel better and more positive. So think about how you can introduce one of these things, one of these activities into your daily routine so that it becomes natural for you to do rather than a battle. I often hear people worried about exercising because of an underlying health condition. Generally, unless you've been specifically told that you shouldn't exercise, it will be good for you. If you've been told you shouldn't exercise, you must have a discussion with your GP and work out what you can and can't do and what is safe for you. This is a little video about the Charter Society of Physiotherapy of their Love Activity Hate Exercise campaign. My name's Jed. Um, six years ago, I had a serious heart attack, and six months after that, I was fitted with uh, an LVAD, which is an artificial heart. As part of my rehab, my physio suggested that I become more physically active throughout the week. I was limited as to how much walking that I could do and where I could do the walking, and then uh, discovered cycling, and the bike takes all of the weight. It's a lot more efficient way of getting around. When we first started cycling, it was like the world opened up. You were out with friends, going to new places, having new experiences. Now I ride an electric bike, which means that instead of having to drive off somewhere to be sort of on the flat or downhill, you can just walk straight out your front door and start cycling. So that's given a real sense of freedom and that you're sort of back being a normal person again. In fact, I feel more normal on the bikes than anywhere else. Cycling is the best thing that's happened to me since I had my heart attack. It's about freedom, friendship and just sort of sheer enjoyment. We started off with two of us and now there's five of us in the group. We try and get out every week. It very quickly becomes addictive. You're always planning your next ride. Both physically and mentally, I just feel a lot more positive. I feel a, uh, a lot better. I end up uh, sleeping better, feeling better. You can see the muscles developing. Waiting for a, uh, a heart transplant, then you want to be as fit as possible to, uh, to, to take on such a big operation. So you can see that most people can exercise, and it's about finding the right level and doing it with some guidance if necessary. If you're at all concerned, do speak to your GP or healthcare professional about what you should be doing. So remember, some top tips here. Anything is better than nothing. Sit less and move more. How can you do that in your day? Choose activities that you enjoy. You're much more likely to do them if you enjoy doing them. Build it into your routine. So find a part of your day every day that you can do something. Find a friend to do it with. That might be a social distance walk bike, run, or even via the internet. Enjoy the outdoors. That's really good for the soul as well. And remember, the hardest thing is getting out of the door. You can do it.
So why not take the opportunity to start now? Below is a link to the exercise videos on the St Christopher's website. Choose whether you want to do lying, sitting or standing and pick the level that's right for you. Go on, let's give it a go. If you have any questions or you want to discuss this further, you can email me at fitforlife at stchristophers.org.uk. Good luck.